Welcome into Well.com, everyone. I think today's episode should be a pretty fun one. We're gonna be doing stringers versus weaves. I think y'all know my stance, especially if you go check out the last video we did on weaving it wide and wishing it well with MIG and flux core. That's the weld that I would wanna see if I had to make a big, fat, wide one. I don't wanna see those ripples. I wanna try to see everything as tight as possible. Less likely to trap slag. That's the bead that I'd wanna see, but I'd still be like, oh, dang, that's big. I don't think weaving is the solution for your problems just because you think it's faster. But a lot of y'all in the comment section of that video claim that weaving is faster. So that's what we're gonna test today. The pros to running stringer beads is pretty much this big one right here, low heat input. We're not spending so much time in one spot, so we don't put as much heat into the part, especially in that one spot. You usually have less stress and less distortion, and the fact that we're not trying to worry about carrying too much metal to fill too quickly, we usually tend to be able to weld in all positions a little bit easier and be a little bit more precise about bead placement and weld size. Again, team stringers, man, because if you look at the cons of the weaves, it's pretty much just the flip-flop of the pros here on the stringers. We got increased heat input. That's gonna put more potential for added stresses into it. Now, I know if you're welding mild steel, it may not be a big deal or whatever. Certain materials, definitely this could be a huge issue. And then this could also cause more distortion if you're just sitting there in one spot pulling all that heat into one area. I put here easier to trap defects and recommended in the vertical position only. Vertical, you can carry a little bit more heat and avoid staying in like that overlapping rolling puddle of carrying too much metal. It usually stacks on itself really well. And the reason why I say it's easier to trap defects is from my own personal experience. I've actually been fired, let go from a job for failing x-ray. The biggest thing here as far as the cons to the stringers is you have to put more passes, which is the pro to the weaves, it's less passes. Y'all are saying slower weld and a faster weld. That's what we're gonna try today. Let me show you the setup. So for today's setup, I've got some 3 8 plate set up in a T-joint configuration in the vertical 3F. We've got about 27 inches of weld to make here. We're gonna do both sides of it, one side stringer, one side weave with the dual shield flux core process. We've got some 7100 Ultra welding wire in there. We also accompanied that with the Arcal flux gas. This stuff is pretty nice for dual shield flux core. There's no cap to take on and off, so that saves you a lot of time. Speaking of time, that's what we're talking about in this video. Plug things in, turn on the pressure, and you can set your CFH, your flow, and you're good to go. We've got the Esaub Rebel. We're running about 26 volts and 400, as well as having about a shade 11 on our hood. I usually opt for a longer neck on my Abbey MIG gun. The nice thing about these is being able to take the necks off and swap them out. The old one was just, just a hair shorter, so hopefully this keeps my hands away from the heat. I'm gonna do three passes on this side, and we're gonna take a measurement of the weld size. We're gonna try to go on the weave side and do one pass and try to get that same size fillet weld on the opposite side. I'm not gonna stop our timer when I do clean the passes in between. As Soon as I strike the arc, we're just gonna run with it. Like a lot of that flux is just falling off, so that's good. Got a little hairy up here at the top. All right, that's first pass and clean time. So hold that, Tyler, the editor. Start time now. Okay, 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 okay. Ugh, my back. Oh, yes, daddy. That's already clean if you ask me. Just a quick Jimmy. All right. Yeah. That's official stop time. All right, let's take a closer look at this. This was three stringer beads. I didn't put any oscillation. This was just a straight, my little morning shakes all the way, all the way up. I will say at the bottom of my beads, it's a little bit closer together, whereas as I get to the top of this weld, I'm a little wider. And I don't have my fillet weld gauges. I dug around in my very organized toolbox. It's not organized, and I couldn't find them. But we can still measure the toes. I'm gonna simply take a, a square, bump that first toe, and do that same thing with this second square and see about where that line lands on right here. About a quarter of an inch right in the middle there. 
quarter of an inch there. We're looking at five eighths closer to up there. So somewhere between a quarter inch and five eighths as far as a weld goes. So we can maybe try to shoot for what is that, like nine sixteenths as far as a fillet weld size for this weave. For this side, the goal is to not stop at all. Make one solid bead. There should be no in-between cleaning or anything like that. We're just gonna sit and just get hot. Put some thicker gloves on for this. It's gonna take a second. I'm gonna have to like jump up to different positions. Good lord, that was freaking crazy. Everything's just so stinking hot. All right, now taking a look at this weld, maybe I'm not that great at weaving. I found it really hard to keep the same weld size. I think that kind of goes on to the precision and being able to place stringer beads where you want them it helps control that weld size a little bit more. I would say the weld size is looking quarter of an inch right in here. Now, if I start coming up to my inconsistent spots where I'm a lot wider, like right in here, we're at that five eighths with my widest point, which is just a couple of little bits. We're a little bit past that five eighths. I still think it's more difficult to hold the wider weaves than it is to just do stringer beads. I know what's inside my stringer beads because I did every single step. Whereas this one, did I get every single piece of that root all the way up? As well as when I'm getting too wide, I've got low points in the middle where I don't have that in the valleys of my stringer bead section. So again, these are my opinions. I can't speak on the quality of the weld because some people are way better at this than me. Let's see what the result all right, everyone, so it's the very next morning in my shop, and I've gotta admit, I lost some freaking sleep over this. Well, not because I found out what the times were, but because that nasty weld that I left on that other side. That weave bead, I don't want y'all to think that I think that that's fine. I feel like I need a redemption weld, so I took this plate and sliced it, and I'm gonna make myself a redemption weld. This is for you guys. I don't want y'all to think that I'm not, a, I'm not a good welder. Poop! Bird nest. <laughs> Let's go. As I was saying, I don't want you guys to think any lesser of me for putting some nasty welds on here and just being like, how's it go? Plus, it's for the data, right? It's a little bit for the data and also a little bit to prove to myself that I don't suck that bad. Maybe the wider spots that I was welding, maybe that could slow me down. Let's run it back one more time. No! No! Pause! Now before you all get at me in the comments for this thing bird nesting so many times this morning, I know why it's doing it. I've just been too stubborn to fix it. And all it is is when you buy this aftermarket MIG gun, you have to get this adapter. This little wire guide that fits in here is where it's having issues because I don't put it in there. So now there's a little space and gap. So if there's any type of wire restriction, it likes to bunch up right there. It was working fine yesterday. So it's just maybe Fridays, it doesn't work too good. Keep it going. And stop time. I think we got a little bit better of a weld here. Now this weld I would say looks significantly better. When you're looking at it from a certain direction, you can really see that width. And as soon as you start to deviate from that little bit of width, even if it is just the tiniest little hair at a time as you go wider and wider, that's what happened here is I got wider and wider. We actually have that quarter inch weld size all the way from the bottom all the way to about this point was where we really started getting wide and we're closer to a little bit past five eighths here. And then we had of course stop because of the bird's nest, and then we're back to a quarter of an inch pretty much the whole way up. This is a better example of what I was looking for. We'll tally up the times for both of the weaves and try to average them out. All right, now for the final results for the fastest times for stringers versus weaves with the dual shield flux core process, and I must admit, I'm gonna be eating my words here a little bit. For our stringer bead times, we've got our bead one, two, and three falling somewhere in between four minutes, close into there. We, remember, we have some prep time in there too for cleaning, so a total time of 11 minutes and 36 seconds. For our weave beads, we have weave one and weave two falling somewhere close to about nine minutes with the average total to being close to nine minutes. Now, if you multiplied this two foot-ish of 
weld times 50 to simulate maybe 100 foot of weld. Our stringer beads taken close to 10 hours at 9.8. And then for our weave beads, we have seven and a half hours to get the same weld size for both of these. Yes. It is a clear winner. Weaves are in fact faster. Now just because you can doesn't mean you should, but that also doesn't mean you can't. This is all subjective stuff, guys. You gotta understand all the things that I said in the beginning of the video still stay true. If you remember looking on the back side of the plate when I'm doing stringer beads, we don't see much of a red glow, whereas compared to the weave beads, we're really seeing a lot of heat input and going a lot slower in travel speeds in order to make those welds. But again, it comes down to the code that you're welding to. If you, there is no code, then maybe it is is dealer's choice, but just heed my words, you wire slingers and cowboys. Stringers, I think, are still the way to go. So if you guys want to see us do other types of tests like this, I thought this was a really fun one. Let us know down in the comments below what we could manually put head to head as far as a process like we did here today. If you want to see some of the products that we use, like the ESOB EMP Rebel 285, the Abbey MIG guns with the different, different interchangeable necks, Outlaw Leather Hoods, Area Out Workwear, everything's down in the description below. Appreciate you all for watching. As always, we'll see you on the next weld.